Making this video has resulted in a lot of teary eyes, sneezing, and general irritation, and that's because I'm working with capsaicin, which is the active ingredient in hot peppers. And I'm going to show you how to make drops that would spice a cocktail, a soda, or even food, but allow you to actually control how much is in whatever you're making. The peppers are great, but the problem with peppers is that th we know this one's hot. We know these ones are hot. These are less hot. But to actually understand how much heat in each one is difficult because the Scoville scale is basically one dimensional. It's like a thermometer. It just tells you whether it's not hot or too hot or somewhere in between. Today we're gonna work in milligrams so that you know exactly how much capsaicin or in my case, we're using no nivamide and it's a capsaicinoid. It's just, there's many different types of capsaicinoids, uh, just not capsaicin. But working in milligrams will allow us to dose things very accurately. And one thing about food and beverages, people like consistency. So when you're making a beverage, if you're using peppers that are grown out in a field or a greenhouse, uh, they do have a lot of variants and that can change your product from you know, month to month or day to day, depending on what you're using. With this method, you can dial it in and have it perfectly consistent every time. So with that, let's, let me show you how to make it. Now, the first thing I do want to go through is a couple of safety things. Capsaicin and other capsaicinoids, lots of people eat them in high amounts. They are safe, but we all know they are very irritating. And it's been a bit of a challenge to make this video because every time I open up this little package, uh, even though it is a waxy substance, but you can actually get pepper or the capsaicinoid in the air. And actually just picking that up, I seem to have puffed some. So now I've got a burning in my throat. But uh, working with it, it, it's not too bad. Um, I haven't had any major incidences. I've made some solutions and tried them out. Uh, it is spicy though. So I would recommend if you're making a lot, you know, a dust mask does help, you know, an N N95 is better. Uh, safety glasses, unless you want to get pepper sprayed in the eyes. Uh, gloves are probably the most important because as you go around touching stuff, you know, you're inevitably going to touch your face and possibly rub your eye. And that's where the majority of the problem comes from. But again, it's no worse than working with a habanero or a Thai chili pepper. Kleenex is helpful, uh, it just gets irritating. And if you're doing a lot of taste testing, you know, put your toilet paper in the freezer uh, because you may overdo it because this is kind of fun to play with. And if you like spicy food, great. But if you just like a hint of spice, even better because you can control it. I gotta show you how to do that. And basically we're just gonna make a, a solution here. These two are an alcohol, so vodka, 40%, and you can dissolve the proper amount of either capsaicin. I use nonibamide because, well, it's not quite as hot as capsaicin. It's about 9.6 million on the Scoville scale, whereas capsaicin is about 16 million. At that point, it doesn't matter, but uh, this is pure enough and it works and it's consistent. The Scoville unit, as I mentioned in the intro, is just kind of one dimensional. It's like a thermometer, it's hot or hotter. What I wanna talk a little bit about is pungency units by ASTA, American Spice Traders Association, I believe, ASTA. And they've kind of basically tied a Scoville unit to milligrams per liter of capsaicinoids. And so I wanna work with milligrams because it allows you to dose things accurately. Now, if I were to ask you how many milligrams would make something spicy, you probably don't know. So milligrams per liter, uh, we start off at about half a milligram. So the threshold for detection is you know, 0.1 milligram. Some research papers say 0.36 milligrams. So uh, half a milligram, most people will taste the spiciness of capsaicin or the other capsaicinoids. And then we go up from there. 
I found one milligram to provide, you know, pleasant spiciness. So what I do is I basically take a drop of this and it's equal to half a milligram per drop, put two drops into a glass and then fill it up with something to try it. And it, it's spicy. It comes, it basically turn your regular Canada dry into more of a, a ginger beer with that spiciness. And then you can work up from there. So you can do different dilutions. But as I mentioned, these are in vodka. The capsaicinoids do dissolve in vodka at the level we need them to. And this one is for anyone who doesn't have access to alcohol, triethyl citrate, and it works fine in triethyl citrate. I just warm it up a little bit, stir it for 30 minutes, and it dissolves fine. Now, how much we're gonna dissolve? We're gonna dissolve, uh, I started with one gram per 100 mil bottle, uh, but that doesn't give a, a good ability to control. So if you just want the slightest hint of spice, because that really does work on a different level. So just giving something that's barely perceptible kind of gives you a pleasantness as opposed to that punch in the face that, you know, putting one of these in a glass does. So we're gonna start at probably 0.5 grams per 100 mils, and that will work out to kind of 0.25 milligrams per drop. Now the problem with droppers is they can vary. So I've done a video on this, uh, flavor drops over on Patreon, if you wanna pop over there and read it. But they can generally go, you know, typically it's 20 drops per mil. That would be a metric drop, so 20 drops in a mil. Though I've often found with alcohol and other solvents, it can be, you know, 0.25 or 40 drops per mil. Uh, it is going to vary, so you, you can calibrate it. I've showed that in the video, so if you need to know how to do it, uh, you can figure it out. But working with drops, if you go four drops instead of two drops, it's not going to cause any problems. It's going to be slightly spicier, but it's not going to throw you way over the edge. Uh, so it's not going to take something from you know 800 Scoville to 80,000 Scoville. So to make this is really easy, Basically, you're just going to weigh out half a gram of either capsaicin or nonivamide. And I'm not gonna do it in this video because the three times I've made it so far has just caused me to sneeze and have watery eyes while I do it. I'm not very good on camera, but uh, you see me weigh things before. Uh, and so opening this pouch just causes those problems. But it is a waxy substance, so it's not like a fine powder or you're gonna get it everywhere, but do use caution with it. It is, again, just like pepper spray, and it will cause the same reaction. So, as I mentioned, if you wear your safety gear, you're going to be fine. But just basically take half a gram, weigh it into a beaker, and you can add 100 mils to this, and you'll end up with a five milligram per mil solution. Now I made a one gram solution and it will work in triethyl citrate too. And it's just because these capsaicinoids are not that soluble, but they do work perfectly for this. But I prefer the five milligram, it gives me more control. Uh, this one, two drops is spicy. Again, not over the top, but it doesn't necessarily allow you to go a little bit lower to that point where it's just perceptible. Uh, this one gives you more control with a single drop. Now, uh, once you've made this, just stir it. Uh, it doesn't need any heat. A stir plate, I find it goes into solution in about 20 minutes. Just keep stirring. Uh, triethyl citrate, you might need a little heat, but uh, they're both stable. They've been sitting around for a couple days and don't seem to present the problem. Now, when you're making a drink, so, if you're making a martini, for example, and it's about 100 to 120 mils, one drop is gonna be different than using something that's more closer to 360 mils. 12, 14 ounce glass, you know, 400 mils, somewhere in there. They will present differently. So the concentration of capsaicinoids in a martini will maybe need one drop, maybe two. Whereas in this, to get the same amount of spiciness, you may need four or five drops. And again, you know, 
this goes a long way. Uh, this stuff is actually fairly cheap online and this is just 20 grams. I probably got it for $40 and this is gonna last me a very long time. But just remember that if you're using a bigger glass, you need to use a few more drops. So I always try to formulate for a lower concentration to make sure I can do smaller volumes. Whereas this one puts this over the top too quick. So, but you can make different concentrations of them if you're working on one specific drink. So like a Caesar. So this is Mott's V8, but if you're using a Clamato juice and making a Caesar, these would punch it up. And if somebody says, make it as spicy as you can, I remember when I was bartending and people would always ask for it as spicy as possible. I never really had the tools to do it. This will do it. Uh, you might wanna do two grams as opposed to one gram, uh, but play with it and see how it goes again. I like a mild to moderate spice. My, I do grow peppers, oops. I do grow peppers and hot peppers. But uh, if you ask me my favorite pepper, it's a Bulgarian carrot pepper. And it's about 5,000 to 30,000 Scoville. Again, there's a wide variance, but they're kind of an orange. They look like a, it's the color of a carrot, uh, similar to a jalapeno in size, but they're very crispy, fruity, and they have that really good heat. So 30,000 or less is my enjoyment level but there are lots of people who love 100,000 and more. You know that benign masochism that you get with hot pepper eaters? Yeah, that's kind of, you can create that using these. So a simple example of how this works is to take whichever solution you're gonna use. I'm gonna use my five milligrams per mil, basically an eight ounce glass and some ginger ale. So this is Canada Dry, it's a pale ginger ale, almost no spice in it. So what I gotta do is take two drops. That's it. And then I'm just going to top this up. Now, when I was doing the testing behind the scenes, I did kind of pepper spray myself with this. Uh, let the carbonation settle down before you put your face up to it because it does get right up your nose when it's just uh, the head is settling down. So now's a good time to drink it, but I can actually feel the pepper in the air. And again, it's not overwhelming or anything, but there is that, you know, capsaicin irritation floating around. And now two drops, I get it more in my nose and a little bit at the back of my throat. It is very mild with two drops of this solution. Uh, the one gram per hundred mils definitely adds more heat. So you can add four drops of this, or you can make a solution, double the strength and add two drops or three drops or four drops. But this one is barely perceptible, though different. You actually, uh, the carbonation gets you right in the nose with it. But again, it's not terrible, but there is some spice on your tongue. now. If you're really into spicy food, you wouldn't even notice too much that this has any heat. But what it does, and what we're gonna talk about in the future, is that these low levels of capsaicin are really good for giving non-alcoholic drinks a non-alcoholic burn. And so when you take the alcohol out of a drink, it tends to take away a lot of that um, burning sensation that you get from the ethanol. And there's a lot of research on trying to replace that. This is our starting point. So working with capsaicinoids is going to make those drinks. You're never gonna replace the alcohol, but you're going to be able to replicate some of that burning or that sensation or give something unique and interesting to your drink. So that's kind of the goal. We'll talk about that in a future video. But to summarize, you can basically take your nonivamide, wherever it is, or capsaicinoid. You can buy this online. I'll link it over on Patreon. I'll include some research, uh, including one piece of research where people who like mild spice tend to drink it at one milligram per liter or one part per million. It would be four to five drops of this solution. 
two drops of this solution, depending on your drop size. And then people who like moderate heat are somewhere around 2.5 milligrams. And then people who are really wild about heat, you know, hot sauces and everything, are about 12 and a half milligrams or 12, 12 and a half ppm. So there's a big jump. So you may actually need a couple different solutions, but the point is, is that now you have a tool that you can accurately dose capsaicinoids, depending whichever one you pick, and then you could create drinks that aren't irritating or inconsistent or all those other issues with formulating with natural products. Now you can still use these if you want. You can use this stuff and make an extract, but what you're not going to know is what the Scoville of it is and how much capsaicin or the other capsaicinoids are in it. Uh, this is most likely cayenne pepper, but it's hard to say, it's just generic. So you're not going to be able to know, whereas with this method, you absolutely do. I know for a fact that each one of these drops is 0.25 milligrams of nonimamide. So that's kind of, it tells me exactly what I am doing. And that is a benefit when you're making a product that people really like and you wanna keep it consistent. So if you want more information on all this, go check out Patreon, ask questions over there, because then it just takes a lot of time to answer questions. So other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.